clarinet class. Welcome back to school. I know that it's uh, new for the goes that have been remote this whole time and those that have been with us since the beginning uh, of uh, on-campus instruction. Uh, this is going to be a little bit different since now we're in the band hall. Now, another thing is different about it is that this week I'm not in the classroom. Um, so we're going to do our lesson today via this video here and hopefully you guys can follow directions and our substitute teacher can help you out as well. So what we're going to do first is get our instruments. We're going to get our instruments not out of the case, just get the case and the instrument out in front of you on the ground, flat on the ground with the buckle or the clips facing you, the zippers facing you, and the handles facing you with the back of the instrument on the ground. If you're still got to go get it from your locker, go ahead and pause the video and resume the video when you guys are all ready. All right, so now that you've had a chance to get your instrument case on the ground in front of you, again, on the ground, not your lap or a music stand, we're now gonna open up the case by lifting the latches open, zipping and open the lids, and lifting, <laughs> lifting the lids open. All right, so we're gonna go over and review just how we put our instrument together, and uh, we're gonna do the entire instrument now, not just the upper joint and the mouthpiece and barrel. So we're gonna go over the steps that lead up to that. Step one, I want you to get out your barrel. Your barrel is just this little piece here. It uh, has a wide base and a very and a slightly narrow top. And we're gonna get now from our barrel, make sure that everything's cleaned up from the top bottom of the barrel. Get your silk swab if you have one and clean out any excess residue that's been sitting in there. So next you're gonna get your upper joint. Your upper joint is gonna be the part of the instrument that has the cork at the top and the cork at the bottom. This upper joint also has these four long side keys that go over the bottom, and it might also have the logo of the brand of the instrument that you have, especially for the, uh, uh, the buffet clarinets. Now, we have the thumb key at the back here, the, the register key, and we have the three keys where our fingers go here, as well as this fish hook key and this A flat key. So when if it looks something like this, you have the upper joint. We're gonna place the wider base of the barrel onto the upper joint. Now, before we do so, we gotta make sure that the cork is lubed enough for it, meaning that it doesn't give us any resistance when we place it on there, or it's not too difficult. Your, um, your cork grease is what you should be getting to do that. So get your cork grease out, and it should look like a tube of chapstick or glue stick, okay? To take the cork grease out, remove the lid, place it somewhere where you can find the lid again. And then just like a chapstick or glue stick, we're gonna turn the base of the tube righty, righty tidy, or just to the right, so that way the uh, cork grease itself comes out of the tube. And we're gonna gently rub around the cork grease to add that cork grease on the cork. Cork grease cork, I keep saying that. And then we're gonna do that as well on the opposite end at the bottom of the upper joint. Remember, we don't want to push on there too hard because we don't want an excess amount of cork grease. We just want a nice thin letter, layer so that it covers all the little holes of the cork to make it nice and smooth when we apply the lower, in, lower joint and the barrel. Once you're done, retract the cork grease back into the tube, turn the base to the left, and then add the cap back on the top and put it back in your case. Leave it near and um, keep it near you just in case you might need to use it again. Now, Twist and push together the base of the barrel to the upper joint. We don't want to just push together and shove it. We want to twist and push. Twisting helps give it a, a little bit uh, more spread on the cork grease, so that way it can slide easier onto the cork. Now, next up, we're going to add our lower joint. Now, this is very important. A lower joint has only the cork on the bottom, not the top and it's also the other only long piece on your case. So what we wanna look at first is that this has the thumb rest and it also has this little rod here. This rod here that's sticking up, it makes a kind of a T-shape, also has a little indent into it that tells us there's another piece of the upper joint that's gonna go over it. So when we place the upper joint onto the lower joint, we wanna line up this rod here that goes underneath these four keys on top of this rod here that goes on the top of the up lower joint. When we line these two parts up, make sure that we're holding 
the base of the lower joint and the top of the upper joint and push and twist together. Now they're rectangular shapes. So they should line up pretty uh, easily when you look at it and make sure again that the lower joint goes underneath that mechanism of the upper joint, not, on, not opposite. Once they're pushed in all the way together, we're gonna grab our bell. The bell is obviously the bell looking part. Ding, 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 ding. This does not have a cork part. This lower joint does. So again, you wanna clean out the inside of this part here and add cork grease to the cork if you need to. I don't need to because I've already flipped this together and we're gonna grab the plastic or wooden portion of the clarinet and make sure that I can turn and push this into place. You don't have to line up anything specific about the bell. Unless you like to have the logo facing forward, you can turn it to where the logo lines up with the rest of the keys. Okay. Same thing for the barrel. Your barrel might have a logo on it as well. Once the all one, two, three, four pieces are connected all the way across, make sure that they're all the way into each other. And then we're going to go in to get our mouthpiece. We have another cork on this mouthpiece and the cork needs to be lubed up just as well as the other corks on the rest of the instrument. If you need to do that, please do so now. Otherwise, we're going to place our cork uh, mouthpiece into the top of the barrel. How we line this up first is make sure that the baffle, this opening at the bottom of the mouthpiece where the reed touches, is lined up with the back of this clarinet. Lines up with the thumb key and the register key and the thumb rest. So when you place it on there, everything should line up perfectly. From the tip of the reed, or tip of the mouthpiece, opening the baffle here down to the keys on the back of the clarinet. The front face of the clarinet mouthpiece should line up with the front of the keys, which is the opposite, right? Again, push those in all the way together until they connect, and then we can go to the next step. You're gonna grab two things. First, you're gonna grab your reed, and make sure that the tip of the reed goes into your mouthpiece or into your mouth so that way you can start moistening it up. Then you're gonna grab your ligature. While this is moistening up, we're gonna talk about the ligature real quick. If you're holding the ligature properly, having it facing you, you could have the screw on the right side and the leisure part on the bottom on your thumb here if you're holding it like I am. Now, lefty loosey and move the top part of this ligature back and forth to make sure that it expands and contracts. If you loosen it more, it gets wider. And if you tighten it, it gets smaller. Now, I'm gonna place this on my pinky, on my ring finger, doesn't matter, of my non-dominant hand. My reed has gotten enough uh, moisture from my mouth and I'm gonna place the flat part of the reed along to the flat part or the baffle, this part here, of the mouthpiece. I'm going to make sure that the tip of the reed, the very small tip of the reed, lines up with the tip of the mouthpiece. So flat to flat, tip to tip, and then we line up the heights. We also want to line up the sides of the reed to the sides of the barrel of the mouthpiece, or the chamber of the mouthpiece to the barrel of the mouth, to the baffle of the mouthpiece. Once that's lined up roughly, you don't have to be perfect right now, take your ligature. You'll notice there's a wide part of the ligature and a smaller part of the ligature gonna go with a wide part in first with the leather portion of the ligature going over the reed while the opposite is on the mouthpiece where the screw is. Holding your thumb on the ligature and the reed, go ahead and righty tighty turn that ligature tight. Make sure before you tighten it though that everything's lined up and that the ligature itself is along the chamber, the rounded portion that's wide on the mouthpiece, not where the baffle is or where the file starts filing down starts on the reed. You want to be below the filing curvature of the reed over the shiny part if you got the Van Doren or Rico uh, reeds. Once that's tightened into place and everything's lined up tip to tip and vertically side to side, we're going to make sure that our reed now and our uh, mouthpiece is lined up with the key again, the back of the instrument. Because sometimes when you're adjusting this, things will move around. So now everything's lined up. We're going to go into how we hold the instrument as it's put all the way together. We're going to start with our right hand actually this time because before we had our right hand on the barrel, we're going to place our right hand on the bottom or the lower joint. Our thumb edge is going to go where the thumb rest is. We're not going to put our whole palm on the bottom or lower joint. We're just going to use the edge of our or the tip of our thumb 
onto the uh, thumb rest. Now, with that being done, that gives us enough room to make almost like a, a nice half circle with, or a sandwich kind of hold with our right hand. There are three holes, all right, that have three keys. Those three circles that are, have holes in them are where your three fingers go for your index finger, that's finger four, middle finger, finger five, ring finger, finger six. And then you have these four keys where your pinky will play later on. Make sure that you don't have your index finger hanging underneath or holding the rest of the instrument up where this side key is. You will bend those keys out of place and then your instrument will be broken. Keep your fingers always hovering over the keys and only touching the keys that you need to play. The only parts I just told you about that it should be touching are your thumbs and the key, or your thumb where the thumb wrist is, and your fingers where the key openings are, as well as your pinky floating above these pinky keys here. Nothing else. Then of course our left hand, we have our thumb key where our left hand thumb goes, our thumb print. And then we have our first finger on the first hole, second finger on the second hole, and then the third finger on the actual hole itself. There's no key on there. So we have finger thumb, one, two, three, four, five, six, and then we have our pinky that float over these keys here. So let's go and start with a uh, embouchure now on how we play an open G. Open G is our very first pitch in our Essential Elements book, number one, and we want to make sure that we can make a really nice clean sound. Now for this one, we have no keys. So how we balance this if we're not going to have our fingers on the keys and we're only holding the weight of the instrument by our thumb? Well, we're going to make sure that our embouchure is on the mouthpiece, keeping the instrument in place so that we don't have to worry about holding it with the rest of our hand, just the weight of the instrument with our thumb. First, make sure that we can identify where the tip of the reed lines up with the tip of the mouthpiece. And as you follow it down the baffle, there's a part where the mouthpiece actually touches the reed when it connects, because there is an opening at the top. When they connect, that's called the break point. You want to make the seal or the embouchure shape around that break point. We're going to first place our teeth on the top part of the mouthpiece, where the top teeth are. And then we're going to make sure that our bottom teeth are covered with our bottom lip by tucking the bottom lip over our bottom teeth. And then make sure that we have both the teeth lined up where the break point is. Keep your chin up, don't bend your head down, and bring the instrument to your face, not the other way around. So bring the instrument up while you're standing or sitting still, and place the tip of the, uh, the top of your teeth on top of the mouthpiece about halfway on the baffle where the break point is, and then tilt or bring the bottom of the instrument out away from you just slightly. Cover your bottom teeth with your lip, and then you should be able to hold it with no fingers. All right, so if you got that down for the open G, let's go over the actual exercises one through nine odd numbers in your Essential Elements book, um, pages four and five. First, we're gonna get our instrument uh, ready, of course, and then we're gonna have the metronome set up at 60 beats per minute. All right, sitting or standing with good posture, get your armature set on the mouthpiece. I will give you a count off one, two, three. On beat four, take a breath in, and then we're gonna play a whole note G for four beats, rest for four beats, another whole note of G, rest for four beats, and then we're done. Here we go. One, two, three. Let's try that one again. Ready? One, two, three. All right. Let's move on to number three. Number three, a pitch we're going to play is F. That means just our left thumb on the thumb key. Not the register key, but the hole here with our thumb print, not just over this part of the hole. We need to cover the whole hole, the whole hole <laughs> with our whole thumb. So here is F, again, kind of balancing it with our embouchure, not our other fingers, just our thumb and our embouchure. And of course, the other thumb with our right hand. Here we go, same rhythm, same thing as number one, but now on F. Get set, one, two, Three. Let's 
try that one again. Get set. And one, two, three. You'll also notice that my fingers are always hovering over the openings or the keys. That way I can press them down faster when I'm playing melodies. So make sure that you're not having your fingers way off to the side. Make sure they're always hovering over the openings so that way you can press them down without having to find them or search for them or reach for them when you're playing faster metal melodies. Let's go to number five. We're going to play another new pitch. That's E. That's thumb and finger one, the very first opening. Not the key on top, but the very first hole where our first finger goes. Again, covering the hole with our fingerprints. Here we go. Here's E. One, two, three. Let's move on to number seven. Number seven is D. That's thumb, finger one, and finger two. Not the little tiny key here, but the opening here. And not this key that's not something you press. It's the hole. So the first hole and the second hole and the thumb hole. Ready? Here's D. Number seven. One, two, three. Finally, number nine, C. That's thumb, finger one, finger two, and finger three. Again, finger three is just the hole. There's no key attached to it. So make sure you cover it with the, the, the pad of your finger, the fingerprint. Number nine, one, two, three. <laughs> Very good. So go ahead and practice on your own. Once you've done this a couple of times, we're now going to take apart an instrument and review how we clean it and take it apart. Okay, so now we're done with class, we're going to take apart an instrument. To do so, step one, we're going to take off the reed. So we're going to loosen the ligature, lefty loosey, or turn the screw towards you. Loosen the ligature up a little bit so the reed loosens up because it will get stuck on there after playing for a few minutes. Then slide the reed, the reed out and place the reed in your mouth to get the excess water off and place it back in your reed case. Next, you want to take off the ligature, place it off to the side somewhere in your case, and we're going to keep our instrument intact because next we're going to grab our swab. So here we have our swab. Our silk swab has a little bead or rod at the bottom that's weighted that's going to go through the instrument and help guide the string to the one end to the other to slide and pull the silk swab through the instrument. We're all just going to start with the widest part of the instrument first so we're going to put an instrument upside down, get our bead, our weighted bead, and place it through the bell and let it drop all the way through the other side. Pull in on the string and the swab all the way through to the mouthpiece. We're gonna do this about three times. Again, start from the bell, let it fall through the mouthpiece opening and pull through, and last time. Bell, drop, pull through. Oh, didn't grab that time. And then we're done with that part. Place the instrument on your lap or have it on your arm next up. And then we're gonna get our silk swab and we're gonna fold it up. Doesn't have to be perfect, just a wad if you will. Then once you have it wadded up, take your string and wrap it around the silk swab. Once you have it wrapped around all the way, take the, the weighted end and tuck it underneath the wrapping of the string that you made so that way it doesn't fall apart. And then place it back, uh, place it in your case. 
Now, we just got to take apart an instrument and put everything away. What I like to do is start with our mouthpiece first and make sure that we put the ligature back on. Once the ligature is on, then we grab our mouthpiece cover that should have come with your ligature. Um, place the mouthpiece inside the mouthpiece cover and place that back in your case. Then of course, you just take off the barrel, place that in your case. Take off the upper joint by twisting and pulling, of course, everything that, you, that has a cork on it, twist and pull. Place that back in your case. Make sure it goes in the right spot because it does have a specific place where your clarinet uh, case is molded for, for that upper joint. Then grab the base of the bell and the base of the lower joint, twist and pull apart the bell, and place those two items back in your case. Once everything's put away, make sure that you close your case before you pick it up and that it's the latches are locked or zipped closed. And make sure that before you do that, that everything's in the case that you need in there, such as your cork grease, your reed case, your silk swab. Have all those other items that we just discussed in their case. Close your case, lock it up, and then take it with you. Otherwise, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye!